Welcome into the Conference USA Bowl Preview Show, sponsored by Ryan. As we wrap up another Conference USA football season, eight teams have made it into bowl games this year, and we're going to preview each and every one of those bowl games and also hear from each of the teams as well. I'm John Little with Ron Thulin. Ron, what a great year in Conference USA. You know, I've been doing this show a long time, John, and, and every year I come in, I go, I'm so excited about the bowls. And you look at the success Conference USA has had in bowls over the last few years, it's incredible. They lead probably the, the entire NCAA in bowl wins. I don't think that's going to change. I think this year, Conference USA with eight bowl games this year, I think they're going to win at least six of them. It's going to be a great year and a chance again to prove that Conference USA plays some pretty good football. Absolutely. And th these schools are motivated and ready to go. And here are the eight bowl games that Conference USA teams are playing in this year. First of all, it starts out, hey, the, the first bowl game is uh, Friday, December the 20th. The Makers won at Bahamas Bowl. And you see the bowls there, all eight of them. Seven of the eight will be on ESPN. And then the uh, Boca Raton Bowl brought to you by Cherubundi is on ABC as well. And it goes all the way into the new year as well with that Lockheed Martin Armed Forces bowl as well and so we're going to preview all of these bowls and we start out with the makers wanted bahamas bowl yep club lit is headed to nassau as the charlotte 49ers make a bowl game taking on buffalo so excited for charlotte ron and the 49ers success this year oh absolutely look at the job will healy did first of all they were five and seven last season but they were just this close to getting to a bowl finally gets them over the hump and now they're going to a bowl game. There's a lot of excitement for good reason. You look at the three all-conference USA players for him, Benny LeMay, number two in the conference in rushing and scoring, number one in all-purpose yards, Cameron Clark, and on the offensive line, Alex Highsmith on the defensive end. And now they're going to a bowl for the first time in program history. Now they started two and five, 0 and three in conference play. They gave up an average of 41 points a game in those first three Conference USA losses. But here's a key stat. The last four Conference USA wins, they only gave up 19 points a game. You got to look at Chris Reynolds, the quarterback. He really had to step up when Benny LeMay was out. Benny LeMay led that powerful offense, 425 yards a game, almost 104 yards rushing a game for Benny. Take a look at the defensive side. They did give up almost 191 yards rushing this season, but it's going to come down to the trenches because they had a very good pass defense. You're going to have to make Buffalo throw the football. Buffalo's a pretty good football team, though. Oh, they really are. Coming out of the MAC 7-5 and five this year, and they get back to a bowl game. These are two teams that are going to be really motivated to try to win that last game of the year. Oh, you look at these two teams. The one thing you have to say, you got two of the hottest teams coming into this bowl game. And you look at Buffalo. They have an offense that can put points up on the board. They have a very stingy defense. It only gave up 293 yards a game. Think about it, that's unheard of in the age of a spread offense. That figure, of course, led the MAC on defense. Stopping or slowing them down for Charlotte's going to be the key. And that starts with Jared Patterson. He set a single season record for rushing with 1,626 yards and had 140 or more yards rushing in each of his final five games. But I think the excitement here is the big key. Can Charlotte not contain the excitement, but keep it in perspective? Because when that emotion leaves, of going into your first bowl game, you still have to execute. I think they're going to go in very confident. They just have to get over the fact that they're at a bowl game and know when you go down there, you're there for business, not for any kind of pleasure trip. Well, think about a guy like Cameron Clark, an offensive lineman for Charlotte. He gets a chance to leave a legacy. I'm just happy that we were able to experience it. Uh, this senior class, I don't think it's a better class to have done it. Um, just the way that we've worked, the way that we've we've stuck together, the way that we've brought other guys along, um, and then like even with guys like Chris Reynolds, Vic, Victor Tucker, all those guys who came in and who stepped up when it was their time. I mean, just just knowing that we all did it together and just how close this team is, it couldn't have been a better team to have done it. So I just it's just an experience that that we'll I don't really feel like we really even understand the magnitude of it until we actually look back at it uh, a little while from now. So don't forget the Makers wanted Bahamas Bowl, Charlotte taking on Buffalo on Friday, December 20th. That is a two o'clock start Eastern time, and that's in Nassau. You can watch it on ESPN. 
Up next, the Cherubundi Boca Raton Bowl, and in steps the Conference USA champions. Florida Atlantic FAU, what a close to the season they had, just marching to a Conference USA championship game win, and they'll take on a very tough team in SMU. I, I mean, these are two double-digit win teams going at it here, Ron. You talk about an exciting game. This could be just that. But first of all, I want to get to FAU. Lane Kiffin, what a job he did at FAU. He turned that program around. They won 10 of their last 11 games, won their second Conference USA title. I had a chance to work with Lane a lot. I wish him the very, very best. We're going to miss him here in the conference, but he deserved to, to make the next move. But still, you look at this FAU team. Now, it starts really with their quarterback, Chris Robinson. The Oklahoma transfer started his tenure at FAU a little bit rocky, but he really came on this season, throwing for over 3,300 yards, 26 touchdowns. Offense averaged 443 yards a game. But when you have somebody like Harrison Bryant, who was the main target, went over 1,000 yards receiving. He was the John Mackey Award winner. We're going to be watching him on Sundays next year. That's a pretty good offense. Now, the defense, they were good. Conference USA games, only one team scored more than 27 points. And I'm, you're always wondering how they're going to do when the coach leaves. Glenn Spencer, who is an outstanding assistant coach at a number of different stops, he will be the interim coach. Glenn is a great guy. I think he understands the bowls. I think he's going to tell these guys, okay, Coach Kiffin is gone, but we still have to play this bowl game. So I'm not really worried about that type of transition for FAU. Well, it's big to bridge the gap between the old regime, if you will, and the new regime as well as Coach Taggart uh, comes in next year. And then you've got SMU. Talk about a squad that has turned it around and they did it with transfers under a great head coach in Sonny Dykes. Well, I, I, I don't want to age myself, but I was covering <laughs> them when they were the Pony Express. That reminded me this season of the Pony Express with Craig James, Eric Dickerson, Lance McElhaney and that group. They had a lot of excitement on the hilltop. Now, this is a good football team. They were sixth nationally in points per game, 43 points a game, ninth in total offense. Obviously, Sonny Dykes, a great job. He's up for National Coach of the Year honors. Magical season for him. Now, halfway through the year, Mustang that fans were really thinking about a big time bowl, but they drop a couple of games late. That took them out of the picture. But this is an offense that's led by quarterback Shane Bouchelle, former Texas Longhorn. He threw for over 3,600 yards. Have an NFL type receiver in James Porche, over 100 receptions this year, over 1,000 yards receiving, and running back Xavier Jones, second in the FBS in rushing touchdowns with 21. The problem for SMU is they give up a lot of yards, almost 440 a game. So the bottom line for FAU, you're facing a team that puts up a lot of points, but you've got a defense that doesn't allow a lot of points. And you got to get to Shane Bouchelle. If you can rattle Bouchelle, their quarterback, FAU's got a chance of winning this football game. Well, FAU plays so well at home, and that's where they're Absolutely. playing in this one as well. And you've got to take advantage of that. Yeah. You're in familiar surroundings. Your routine doesn't change from what you did in the regular season. I think that's a big key. Too. Right. You know, our fans are going to show out for this big bowl game against SMU. Uh, followed Coach Dykes for years. Just the, the turnarounds he's had at a couple different schools and uh, very uh, being the Big 12 and knowing of his dad and then him, what he's done is, is just tremendous. Um, offensively, uh, everybody can see the stats for themselves and, and they do a great job of moving the ball. Very exciting uh, team to watch. Uh, teams, uh, and you see in the, the crowds he draws out there, everybody loves good offense. So he's he's been exciting and we've got our hands full there. We are so pumped about the Cherubundi Boca Raton Bowl coming up on Saturday, December 21st. It's a 3.30 start Eastern time on that Saturday in Boca Raton at FAU Stadium. A matchup of two teams with double-digit wins, FAU and SMU. Now that same day, down the road in Montgomery, Alabama, it's a former Sunbelt Conference matchup in the Camellia Bowl. Hey, we've got FIU going up against the Arkansas State Red Wolves. But which FIU team is going to show up? Hey, because this point. is a team that lost three of their last five games down the stretch. But one of those losses, don't forget, final game of the regular season when they lost to Marshall in overtime. But this is also a team that beat Miami this season. I mean, think about that. You beat Miami. I know Miami didn't have a great year, but it's still Miami to me. 
You look at the offense for FIU, James Morgan had an outstanding year. I was really excited for this young man. He threw 16 touchdowns and only three interceptions. That came in to play in a lot of games. Anthony Jones over 800 yards rushing for FIU this season, but they have to tighten up their defense. They finished last in the conference in rushing category. They gave up over 200 yards a game, but the good news for them, they have an outstanding pass defense. And I think that's going to come into play because obviously Arkansas State, they control the football, but FIU, they have a chance now to, to kind of get that bitter taste out of their mouth for dropping a couple of games they shouldn't have and win a bowl game. I think Butch Davis is going to have his team fired up. Well, Arkansas State has always been able to oh, yeah. throw the football, like you said. And it's been an emotional year for them uh, with what they went through early in the season. Coach Anderson losing his wife right before the year, but they pulled it out seven wins on the season. That's impressive. Well, it is. And, you know, when those kind of tragedies happen, and I've seen a lot over the years, the team will try to come together. And I think they really played hard for Coach Anderson this season. And I know what a best way to, to honor Coach Anderson and his late wife to win a bowl game. So I think that may play a factor. But you look at this Arkansas State team, ninth straight bowl game. Arkansas State put over three, 430 yards a game on offense this season. Majority of that was throwing the football because they have one of the best receivers, Omar Bayless. He led the NCAA in receptions over 1,400 yards, school record 16 touchdowns. He was also the Sunbelt Offensive Player of the Year. They have a freshman quarterback, Lane Hatcher. He was Sunbelt Freshman of the Year. Now, he started eight games, threw for at least 300 yards in five of those, but what was impressive, his completion percentage was about 68%. And I think if you, bottom line, you look at this game, whoever plays defense is probably gonna win the football game. And I think right now, if you're FIU, you gotta be the team that hung 30 points on people, including Miami, to win this football game and tighten up that defense. I think this is a very winnable game, though, for FIU. Well, for FIU, they are really excited to be in a bowl game again. Coach Butch Davis knows how big it is to have a three bowl game streak. From the outside, you know, people are very, you know, impressed because this program hasn't had a lot of success. And to be able to, you know, to, go to three bowl games in a row you know I think that people respect that and uh, that you know it's it's good but let me just tell you the respect it's about these kids I mean and I, I say it all the time in 2017 those guys bought into the idea and the and the future of this program and they every success that we've had you know the kids have made it happen Coach Davis tries to lead his FIU Panthers to a win over Arkansas State in the Camellia Bowl coming up on Saturday, December 21st in Montgomery, Alabama. That's a 4.30 start Central Time, 5.30 Eastern Time on that Saturday afternoon. What a great matchup we've got in the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl a little later on that same day on the 21st. Man, you got the number 21 team in the nation in App State, the Sun Belt champions, taking on UAB, a squad that silenced a lot of critics this year and rode it to a West Division championship in Conference USA. I mean, three straight bowls for UAB. I think that is impressive. But let, I want to talk about Bill Clark. After the first bowl, when the program came back, took them to a bowl game, everybody said, oh, that's just one and done. They were excitement. Then he has the third bowl game now. After losing 35 seniors on last year's team, I think Bill silenced a lot of critics. The guy can coach football. He's got a heck of a thing going on at UAB, and I am so happy for them to go to their third straight bowl game. Now let's talk about this team, because UAB, they started the season Obviously, Conference USA season, losing to Western Kentucky by seven. They came back to win three straight after that. And you saw how they started to prove they can win with both offense and defense. In defensively, late, here's what you have to remember. In Conference USA wins, he held Conference USA opponents to just 16 and a half points a game, had the number one rush defense in Conference USA, number one total defense. Tyler Johnson, their quarterback, missed a lot of games, played sparingly the last month of the season, still threw for almost 2,000 yards. The problem he had, 15 touchdowns and 14 interceptions. And in a bowl game, you can't do that. You've got to have ball control in this game. And I think UAB is going to strive for that, limit their mistakes, 
good chance to win another bowl game. Well, hopefully so. But Appalachian State, I, oh. golly, no slouch. Maybe the best team in the entirety of North Carolina. 12-1 and one this season, and they were dominant in their Sun Belt Championship victory as well. Well, they have two Power 5 uh, road wins against Power 5 teams. Obviously, they beat North Carolina and South Carolina. Only group of five school with two wins over a Power 5 team on the road. Only team with a bowl win in each of their first four seasons of FBS play. Second straight year, though, they lost their head coach. Sean Clark was going to be the interim head coach as Elijah Drinkwitz goes to Missouri. But this is a balanced team. Offense number nine in scoring in the NCAA, 39.4 a game. You talk about balance. They have a 2,500-yard passer, a 1,300-plus yard rusher, and you average over 435 total offense. Zach Thomas, great quarterback for him. Darrington Evans, the workhorse, averaged more than five yards a carry. And again, with an offense as potent as App State, you have to have some type of ball control. And you look at UAB, they were fourth in time of possession in Conference USA this year. They need to carry the ball. They need to keep the ball away from them. Sometimes your offense is your best defense. Absolutely. It all sets up to be a showdown in the Superdome. Look at them being a top 25 team and uh, what they've done this year, beating South Carolina, North Carolina, winning their division, their conference again. Um, you know, I think for us, it's also a preview, a chance to preview next year's team. You know, I was sitting there, you know, all right, seniors, raise your hand yesterday, and it's just a, it's a small number of guys. And so, we, you know, we want to see what our group does next year. Obviously, we'll, we'll get a few guys back that, are, that have been injured and um, really excited about our recruits. But, you know, it's a big, I think this is kind of a preview of, of next year's team for us going against the top 25 teams. So it's a huge deal for us. Um, but, but, you know, what a great job they've done in that program through the years. The RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. What a great matchup. UAB against number 21 Appalachian State at the Mercedes Benz Superdome on Saturday, December 21st, 8 o'clock Central Time, 9 o'clock Eastern Time. You can catch it on ESPN. You're going to love this matchup in the Bad Boy Mowers Gasparilla Bowl a couple days later on the 23rd, a Monday. What an opportunity for Marshall to take on UCF in an NFL stadium. And it always seems like Marshall is playing well at bowl time. Absolutely. This takes me back to the old Conference USA Let's day, go. by the way. But you talk about Marshall. One thing I like about Doc Holliday, the head coach of Marshall, he gets his teams ready. It's like, yeah, we went to the bowl. We're going there to play football, not to party. They're 12-2 and two in bowl games. They've won seven in a row, and I don't really see that changing. However, this is going to be a tough game for Marshall. Marshall started the year 2-3, and three, but then they rattled off five straight. Things were looking really good, a possible East title, since they had already beaten FAU. But then Charlotte tripped them up for their second conference loss. Title hopes were gone. If you look at the offense, over 396 yards a game, number two in rushing. Brendan Knox, the conference MVP, had an outstanding year, over 1,200 yards, best in the conference. He's going to play a huge part in this game, as much as quarterback Isaiah Green. He has got to play well. He threw for 14 touchdowns, but he had nine interceptions. You can't give UCF a short field because they're a very potent offense. Their head coach, Josh Heupel, he was a pretty good quarterback, by the way, at Oklahoma, and he was the Oklahoma offensive coordinator for a while. They're going to be throwing the ball all over the place. So you have got to make sure you don't make mistakes and shorten that field because UCF is going to take advantage of that. Well, Heupel has things rolling. Despite a coaching change a couple years ago as Scott Frost moved on, 9-3 and three this year, only a couple losses in the American. This is a really good UCF team again. You know, when everybody thought when Scott Frost left, oh, it's going to go down, but Josh has done a great job. I'm a big fan of his. Big time offense, fourth in the NCAA in total offense. Get this, 526.6 yards. They had four 600-yard games. Now, their three losses this season came by a combined seven points. Quarterback Dylan Gabriel threw for almost 3,400 yards, 27 touchdown passes. His main target, he's a good one, Junior Gabriel Davis. We could see Gabriel on Sunday, the Gabriel to Gabriel connection. I kind of like that. Davis had 72 receptions, set a school record with over 1,200 yards, 12 touchdowns. The defense is solid, but they give up a lot of yards, 345 a game, but they're more of a bend don't break kind of defense as opponents converted only 28 percent on third down sixth best in the ncaa 
Marshall showed they can run the football. Second in Conference USA, over 195 yards a game. They also held the ball 30 minutes a game. They may have to play a game of keep away, John, because to be honest with you, if you give them the ball, UCF the ball, they're going to they're start flinging it around. The best defense, again, we've already mentioned it, could be the best offense. I think Marshall's got to do a couple of things. No turnovers, or maybe one at best. And it better be on the wrong side of the field. Keep the field short for Central Florida. They're going to make you burn, and you've got to control the ball. You do that through running the football. Doc Holliday's been here before. He knows what it takes to win a bowl game. I think he's going to give them at least a chance to win this game against a very good Central Florida squad. Well, UCF has been on the national stage the last few years. A huge turnaround in that program. We know what that can do for a team being on that national stage. And Doc Holliday, the head coach at Marshall, also keenly aware of what playing on a national stage does for his program. I think we're the only game on that day you know, in the <coughs> afternoon. Too. So it's a great exposure for us and ESPN game. and. You know, as I've said, I've said many times, you know, I, I really like the uh, having the opportunity to go play a bowl before Christmas because I think when you play that 20th, 23rd game, you know, people aren't bowl weary at that point. You know, there's a lot of people still looking to watch football, and you know, our games have all been very, you know, watched you know, that we've had on from New Mexico Bowl to all of them, and and uh, so it's a great time slot, you know, against a great opponent. And, uh, I've always felt that any time you can get exposure for your program on a national stage like that, it's going to help you recruiting and otherwise. The Bad Boy Mowers Gasparilla Bowl Marshall taking on UCF on Monday, December 23rd. That one at 2.30 Eastern Time at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa as Marshall looks to win their eighth consecutive bowl game. And on Thursday, December 26th, it is the Walk-On's Independence Bowl playing just down the road from Ruston in Shreveport. It is the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs, and they get to face the Miami Hurricanes. Anytime you go up against an ACC program, you got to get excited. I was just talking to some people here in the Conference USA office, and we were talking about what games I'm excited about. Mm -hmm. I like this game. Forget about the fact that Miami was 6-6. Six and six. It would be great for the conference to say, yeah, 2019, our guys beat Miami twice. Louisiana Tech, six straight bowl games. They've already joined Wisconsin as the only team to win five bowl games in their last five years. Good football team. So let's talk about them. They had an eight-game win streak going on, Louisiana Tech did, before dropping the game to Marshall. Then they lost to UAB. Now, here's the big stat on this. In two Conference USA losses to Marshall and UAB, they averaged only 12 points a ball game. This coming from a team that was the second highest scoring offense in Conference USA game. They had six games plus 40 points. They need that again. They averaged 445 yards offense. It starts with Jamar Smith, number two in pass efficiency in Conference USA, number one in yards per game, offensive player of the year. He was not playing in those two losses. Now last year, he had the best game of his year in a bowl game. He's going to have to do that again. Justin Henderson fell 33 yards short of 1,000 yards rushing, but he did lead the conference in rushing touchdowns. That transfer made a big impact. The potential is there for him to have a big game. Adrian Hardy, his receptions were down this year, but he was still a big time threat. Defensively, you look at Amik Robertson, the cornerback, first team All-American was announced. This is a defense that needs to generate some plays. Now they forced 23 turnovers this year. That was second best in Conference USA. You need to do that against Miami because, once again, you have that short field. You force that turnover, get the short field. Louisiana Tech's going to show us why they were so good in those wins offensively. Give them a short field. They're going to make Miami pay for it. Well, for Miami, head coach Manny Diaz, you know, he's trying to get things turned around there at Miami, but he knows a thing or two about Conference USA. Oh, he's been to two schools in Conference U and... He was at Louisiana Tech, the defensive coordinator. That was a defense that led the NCAA in forcing turnovers. You look at Miami, offenses led by quarterback Jaron Williams, who had 19 touch and, uh, touchdown passes, and running back, my favorite name, DJ Dallas. Mm. On the defensive side, Gregory Rousseau, who's just a freshman, had an outstanding year. Louisiana Tech knows that because he had 14 sacks on the season. Now, it's almost a home game for Louisiana Tech. So they have to feed off the crowd. They need to get their offense back in high gear. That led them to that eight-game win streak where they averaged 41 points a game. And don't forget, Miami eight uh, have lost eight of their last nine 
bowl games. Mm. Well, this is a big bowl game, not just because a Conference USA team is taking on an ACC team, but Skip Holtz knows that this is a history-laden bowl game as well, well the Independence Bowl. I know it's the 11th longest running bowl game, running for 44 years, learned an interesting fact that it was developed in 1976, um, 200 years into our independence. And that is why, where it got its original name, the Independence Bowl. So just continually educating uh, myself and the, and the football team with, with great facts like that uh, about this opportunity. This is a uh, fan friendly, this is an alumni friendly, friendly, this is a family friendly bowl game and that everybody should have the opportunity to get to Shreveport to see this, this team play. Uh, I look forward to the reception that we're going to receive in Shreveport. I look forward to the uh, the fans that we're going to have in the stadium, the atmosphere created in that in that bowl game, and certainly would encourage all of the Louisiana Tech alumni, uh, family, and friends to come join us on the 26th. You'll when you get done with your Christmas turkey uh, and ham dinner on Christmas Day. Uh, I certainly hope that you'll take the opportunity to come out the day after Christmas and get a little fresh air and enjoy uh, Shreveport with us, especially with the opportunity to play at 3 o'clock against a really good ACC team in Miami. The Walk-On's Independence Bowl in Shreveport, Louisiana Tech. It's a chance to take on Miami. You can catch it on ESPN at 3 o'clock on Thursday, December 26th. We move on to the Surf Pro First Responder Bowl in Dallas, Texas. A couple days before New Year's, great place to party is Dallas, as always, and Western Kentucky taking on Western Michigan. What an opportunity for Western Kentucky. It was a rough start to the season for the Hilltoppers, but man, did they finish it almost perfectly. Well, big time tip of the hat to their head coach, Tyson Helton. He was the Conference USA Coach of the Year. Here's the great stat. Tyson Helton, his dad, was Kim. He also coached in Conference USA, first father-son duo to get Coach of the Year honors, so that's good. But you got to tip your hat to Western Kentucky this season. What a year they had. Uh, they're coming off a 3-9 and nine season, no bowl game last year, and to turn this thing around, here are a couple of numbers you may want to consider. Last two losses in Conference USA to Marshall and FAU, Western Kentucky was in a position to win, total by 14 points. That is it. They had wins over Arkansas, they clobbered Arkansas, the SEC, and Army. Offensively, starts with graduate transfer Ty Story, did a great job calling the shots. Completed about 70% of his passes, over 2,200 yards. Now, he played in only 10 games. He still threw 12 TDs, only five interceptions. And here's my favorite stat about Western Kentucky's offense. 417 passes on the season, 403 rushes. They were completely balanced, but you got to think of Lucky Jackson. He was the main target, led the conference in receptions a game, had 51 receptions in 2018, up that to 77 this season. Now, go back to media day, back in July. Nobody talked a whole lot about Gage Walker. He was a converted defensive player, just moved to running back in the spring. So what did he do? He goes out and rushes for over 1,100 yards, second team all-conference USA. Defensively, it all begins with defensive lineman D'Angelo Malone, our defensive player of the year in the conference, and Kyle Bailey, who moved from safety to linebacker this year. He ended up having 98 tackles. So you look at this defense for Western Kentucky, you, you usually think offense. Western Kentucky's got a stout defense, and I think this is going to be a big win for Western Kentucky. Well, in Western Michigan, they are a team that has struggled in bowl games over the years, only 1-8 all-time in bowl games. However, if there's any year that they can get it done, it might be this year because they've got a really talented offense. Well, their, their offense averaged over 457 yards a game. So I consider that pretty good offense. Now it's led by Levante Bellamy, the Vern Smith Leadership Award winner given to the best player in the MAC. He rushed for over 1,400 yards, led the FBS with 23 touchdowns. Their quarterback is outstanding, John Wasson. Not only good on the field, but off the field. He won the Werfel Trophy this season for community service, athletic, and academic achievement. Had an outstanding year, 2,900 yards, 19 touchdowns, only seven interceptions. Here's the problem for Western Michigan. They give up 415 yards a game. That is huge. 
So you look at Western Kentucky, a lot of uh, excitement, obviously. They're going to the bowl. They turned it around. Once again, we go back to the same scenario of Charlotte. you got to remember they are there to do a job. Yes, you get all the perks. You get the free gifts, the swag, all that, and free hotel room. But you're going there to do a job. And I think Western Kentucky is not going to be satisfied with this season if they walk away without a victory. And I think Western Kentucky is going to win this ball game. Well, it's time to make a tradition of going to bowl games if you're coming from Bowling Green to Dallas this year. And Coach Helton, the coach of the year in Conference USA, is ready to build that bowl tradition. It's a great accomplishment anytime you can get back to having a bowl tradition. And that's our number one thing here is that we want to play in a great bowl every year. I can't think of a better one to go to than the first responders bowl. What a you know, great place to have it in Dallas. It's a great town. Uh, what a great event. You know, you're celebrating all the first responders, whether it's the medical, the police, ambulance, fire. Um, so it's something very special to be a part of. And then for us to be able to go back in our first year back and the guys that are part of this team and the seniors and able to close out the season in such a great way. Uh, it's just an exciting time for us and can't think of a better place to do it than in Dallas in the first responders bowl. In Dallas at Gerald J. Ford Stadium where SMU plays, it is the Surf Pro First Responder Bowl, Western Kentucky against Western Michigan. You can catch it at 11.30 a.m. Central Time on Monday, December the 30th, and watch it on ESPN. And now we go to Cowtown for the Lockheed Martin Armed Forces Bowl as Southern Miss takes on Tulane in the new year, January the 4th. Really looking forward to this one, Ron. I think more than anything, it's a couple teams really familiar with each other, a couple programs that have played a lot over the years. Oh, I've called their games before. I mean, this is the 31st meeting between these two, but the first since 2010. Once again, we go back to the old Conference USA days. This is going to be a fun game to watch. You need to get your tickets for this. Now, offensive uh, Southern Miss, they averaged almost 418 yards a game, but they hit a snag the final two games of the regular season. They only averaged 13.5 points. That has to change. Quarterback Jack Abraham last year threw for over 2,300 yards and 15 touchdowns. He was the most accurate passer in the country. This year, he upped that 3,300 yards, 18 touchdowns. But when you have a receiver as good as Quez Watkins, fourth in the conference in receptions per game, but led the conference in receptions, uh, reception yards per game, that's a pretty good target. Those two have to rekindle what they had the first part of the season. And I think the big thing for defensively, did, they did improve this year. That was a focal point coming in 2019 for Coach Hobson. This is an athletic team. It's got a great amount of speed. They've got to use that. And I think right now, if you're Southern Miss, you got to remember, last year you were snubbed by the Bulls. Mm. This year, you're going to the Bulls. You need to make people pay for not letting you go next year, last year. And I think their defense has improved. Their offense has just got to get back to where they were when they were winning all those games. I think you're exactly right. It's all about finding that motivation at this mm -hmm. time of year. And Southern Miss has something certainly they can hang on to. Tulane needs to find that. It probably wasn't exactly the year that Willie Fritz was hoping to have in New Orleans. Not a bit because this is the first time since 79-80 they're going to back-to-back -back bowl games. But it was an odd season for Tulane. Start of the year, 5-1. and one. Everybody was talking about the possibility of winning the AAC, but they lost five of their last six games. A little consolation uh, for all that losses, but you get to go to a bowl game. Tulane was successful this year. Now, they scored 38 points, all six of their wins. They've got to get to that figure. They're most successful when they run the football. They were 13th best in the country, almost 250 yards a game. They've got an outstanding quarterback. This kid's exciting. Justin McMillan led him in passing, led them in rushing. Now, they have a defense that gave up 378 yards a game, but defensive end Patrick Johnson, second year in a row, was named second team all AAC. He is a good one. Now, golden opportunity for Southern Miss. Can they get that high-powered offense that in seven games ever scored more than 30 points? And can they get the stingy defense? I think Tulane right now may be questioning themselves because they started out so well. Things started going down, but if you're Southern Miss, you've got to contain their quarterback. You can't let them throw for a bunch, and especially you can't let them run. Make them one-dimensional. I think that's going to happen. Well, it all adds up to a really competitive matchup, a 7-5 team in Southern Miss against a 6-6 six six program in Tulane.
good bowl game. We're excited about being the Armed Forces Bowl. I think we we talked about it a lot. You know, we're a military town, really, kind of with Camp Shelby, and uh, it's just an honor to, to be in the bowl game. And we have a long tradition at Southern Miss with the military, and then to play Tulane, which you know we're two local schools. So hopefully that'll be a good draw and a big crowd. And I think uh, I think that's great for the fans. It's the Lockheed Martin Armed Forces Bowl. Southern Miss taking on Tulane in Fort Worth at Amon G. Carter Stadium. Big matchup on Saturday, January 4th. Get up early for this one. Get your brunch in for this 1030 start on ESPN. So there they are, the eight bowl games for Conference USA teams this year. From Friday, December 20th, all the way through Saturday, January 4th. Some great watching along the way. Again, seven of the eight on ESPN and one on ABC as well. Ron, tell me, which one of these games are you most looking forward to this year? Well, first of all, I think that Conference USA will go at least 6-2 and two in bowls again this year. He's on the record. <laughs> on the record. I go out on a limb. Please, don't, know, don't find out where I live. <laughs> FAU and SMU, I love this game. I think it's going to be a lot of offense. It's two great coaching staffs. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. My other one, obviously, is Louisiana Tech and Miami. I'm a, a huge Coach, Coach Holtz fan, and I think this would be great if somebody in Conference USA can beat Miami again this year. A little bit of bragging rights. Well, I'm excited about the very first one because I'm, I just love it when a school gets into a bowl game for the first oh, yeah. time. You know Charlotte's going to be motivated to take on Buffalo. Club lit. It's going to be awesome in the Makers Wanted Bahamas Bowl. So I'm really looking forward to that. And it's always great early in the season just to know that bowl season right. is here and you get that one right off the bat and get a Conference USA team getting a win early on I think would be wonderful. Well, what's funny because I went back and looked at our notes from Conference USA Media Day back in July and we were talking to Charlotte and their players and the coaches, and they were all excited. They knew they had a possibility of getting to a bowl game. They had their heads on right. They knew what it took. They knew last year they were close. And to watch them get that this year, I think it's exciting for them. It is. It's going to be an exciting bowl season. We appreciate you watching the 2019 Conference USA Bowl Preview brought to you by Ryan. We hope you enjoy the bowl season and watching all of these games. For Ron Thulin, I'm John Little wishing you and yours a happy holidays. Thank you.